everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna say hello, everybody. My name is Jeannie Garbarino, and I run a science program called Rocky to You Science Outreach, and that is in New York City. And one of the things that we like to do uh, as part of Rocky to You is hang out with kids like you and talk about science. And I'm so super pumped to introduce you to scientist Molly from another awesome program based in New York City called the BioBus. And the BioBus is special because it talks about microscopes with kids in schools just like you. So I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to hand everything over to Molly because she's our special scientist for the day. And I would love for you all to ask questions and really pay attention to what she has going on because I think it's going to be very exciting. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Hi, everyone. Um, so that is correct. My name is Molly. And um, I work on board something called the BioBus, which is a science laboratory that we've put inside of. Can you guess where we put it inside? Yeah, I see a hand up. Claire, go ahead. A bus? Exactly. We put it inside of a bus. Can you imagine? So like, think about your um, school bus. If you take a school bus to school and take out all the seats and instead if you put a whole science lab full of tools like this one right next to me and um, things for us to collect samples with and that's and that's what we've done and some exciting news is that I'm actually no longer in New York and in fact I am trying to bring us a brand new bio bus in Massachusetts so this might be something that in the future we can we can even come and visit you with. Um, so I'm from Massachusetts originally, and I'm here now. Um, so not too far away from all of you. And um, so what I want to do today is look at some samples that I collected just outside of my apartment. Um, and it doesn't look like very much right now. I'll show you what it looks like. Anything you notice? You can throw things in the chat or if you want, um, you can raise your hand just so that we don't get too much feedback. We can have people one at a, one at a time call out what they see. What do you notice? Someone in the chat, Claire says dirt. And dirt. Ava asks- Is it alive? It, Bugs, it's alive. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Those are kind of questions I want to try to answer about it. You're right, there's some dirt. Um, there's even, I have a larger, there's some it's in a plastic cup yeah I like to recycle things so this is just from some like takeout food um, and it's, it's become a scientific tool for me did you know that scientists often use things that they just like the rest of us like Tupperware things they have around the house as scientific tools so this is one I went outside today and I collected I would call it leaf litter I love that okay maybe there's some worms in it Claire says um, moon rocks I wish that would be cool I, I mean, I don't know what's in my leaf litter. Um, it would be difficult for me to identify if any of it originally came from the moon. Um, well, we would need a bugs, geologist. Molly, uh, McLean, there's a chat here that says that uh, somebody is named, uh, McLean named a bug Bart. Wow, okay. I like that. You, has anyone here ever had like, okay. Maybe a thumbs up if you've tried to keep a bug alive inside your house before. Some thumbs up for that. And you can also give me a thumbs down if you haven't, but just so I can see who here has ever tried that before. Some yeses, some noes. Okay. Who here has ever tried to keep a plant alive inside your house before? Okay. A few more thumbs up with that one. I see some, some, some me's in the chat. That's great. Um, so when I grew up, I used to love learning about living things by doing exactly that. I would keep them alive either in my house, which my parents weren't always super happy about, um, or I'd go outside and look at them really closely. Um, and that's a really great way for all of you to be a scientist. Um, just 
exactly with the things that you have with your eyes and your ears and your nose sometimes. And really, I try not to use my taste so much when I'm observing in science. There's sometimes that that's appropriate, but not if I'm looking at looking at bugs. Now, why am I saying all of these things? Um, today, I have a special tool for us to use together. And it's the one that's behind me. We've already told you what it is called. We throw in the chat, tell me, what is this? Do you remember what this tool, the name of this scientific tool right next to me is? Excellent job. We've got Ava, we've got um, some excellent microscope answers coming in the chat. This is a microscope. And something very special about it is I have equipped it with a camera on top, which is great because how would you all feel if I'm like, look, this is the most fun tool on earth to use and I'm just going to use it and you can watch me. Does that sound like a good idea? I'll just use it. I'll look into it like this and you can just all look at the back of my head. I don't think so. So what we've done instead is I've made it so that I can give you all microscope vision you'll be able to see everything that the microscope sees and we'll make discoveries together. I don't know what we'll find because like I said, I just collected this sample and it could have all sorts of things in it um, and we're going to have to discover. So I'm going to practice microscope vision before I put the sample on. So what I need from all of you, there's a little bit of participation involved. What I need from all of you is you're going to give me a countdown. We're going to go three, two, one, and then you point at me and I'm gonna get the microscope initialized and ready to, to show onto the screen. Um, and when I do that, right now, I'm gonna get off nothing on the microscope and I'm gonna put a mystery object and we're gonna look at that with our microscope vision, okay? Um, I will give you one hint. The mystery object is something I imagine you all have very nearby right now. So let's do a countdown, ready? Can you give me a three, two, one, microscope vision? Okay, ooh, it kind of looks like we're underwater or something. What do you notice? There's nothing really going on yet. Oh, you can kind of adjust the image, but like I said, I don't have a sample on here. You're looking at kind of the glass. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just move my hand across the microscope and let me know what you see. Yeah, that's my hand. Can you see my fingernail? So we're pretty zoomed in. That's about how, that's how zoomed in we are right now. That's a familiar object. Now we are going to put on our mystery, our mystery test object. So I'm gonna, just like before, I'm gonna slide it across. Whoa, okay, I'll stop right there. Using your skills of observation, your eyes mainly in this case, meat, that's an interesting observation, maybe because it's got that like, that sort of texture, lots of little um, kind of almost gritty worm sponge. Oh, I like that cheeseburger because it looks like it's got that yellow cheese. I like it. Rock. I'll move around a little bit more. Keep them coming. Keep these guesses coming. I'm going to move around a little more. Ah, Ellie got it. Nice job. A pencil. This is a pencil. I think it's even the classic if I move over here. Does anyone have a pencil just like this near them? This is like a Ticonderoga. <laughs> a pencil. Oh, yeah, I see one. Awesome. Yeah, so we are looking at a pencil. And I love, we got some questions there. How? How did we do that? So I took this and I put it right on the part of the microscope where the action happens. This is called the stage. This is also where I put my hand. This image went up through this kind of black thing. We'll get into what's inside there in a minute. And then it went all the way up. And in this case, it went up to a camera. And that camera, you see this cord? 
It goes all the way to my computer and it attaches to all of you. A lot of the time when I use a microscope, I don't have the camera and I use these. And these allow me to look straight down and see the same thing. So what you just saw is exactly what you would see if you were here with me and able to look through these, these eyepieces is what we call them. So an eyepiece, if I, if I take one right here, I can show you, whoa. What happens if I hold this up to, that's kind of bizarre. I just turned my head upside down. I know it's kind of cool. So lenses can do all sorts of interesting things. Um, but basically they take an image and they can manipulate it. They can make it bigger or smaller, or sometimes they can flip it. Um, I'm wearing them on my face right now. Does anyone else have lenses on their face yet? Does see some glasses? So, so a similar thing happens here. It's a smaller lens but it's basically the same thing as what's inside of my microscope right now. Okay, are we ready for some living samples? Does anyone have any questions before I do this about how my microscope works or what we just saw? Okay, um, Jihei? Um, when you put something um, on the microscope, how, how do you see it from the lenses? That's great, that's a great question. So. Like I said before, up here is a camera, just like a camera um, that you take pictures with. It's just like it. And imagine if I'm pointing that down through a hole at the top of my microscope, you can kind of see where this, this tube is. And that points all the way down through the big lens, which is here. So basically my camera is pointing right through. And then just like the camera that I'm using on my computer, um, it just goes straight into zoom. So I have a cable and it runs all the way in and I can just select it um, as one of the cameras that you get to see my picture with. I saw, I'm not sure who was first, but I see William and then Kate have their hands up. William, why don't you go ahead? Um. What's inside the microscope? That's a, that's a great one. So if I take my microscope, let's see if I can do this. I just, I just took the body of the microscope off. And I'm even gonna flip it. So you can see those are the two lenses that go down. One comes from each eye and they go down. And then that's basically it. There's just, there's a couple of lenses that are stacked on top of each other inside of here. And then the, the path of that image will either go to my eyes or up to the camera here. And down here, you can kind of guess at what this is. I'll put my, the body of my microscope aside for a second. Hold this up. This is pretty straightforward. What do you see going on here? I can actually turn it off and on. This is the main thing that this part of the microscope does. This is just the light. So I can either have a light come from um, the bottom or I can have a light that comes from the top, depending on what sample I'm looking at. If I can shine light through it, then I'll use the one underneath. And if I can't, then I'll use the one on top. Does that answer your question, William? Awesome. Okay. Um, who was next in our stack? I see, I think it was, was Kate before, but then a bunch of other people also raised their hands. So let's, um, the order that I have you in is I have um, McLean, then Paige, then Kate, then Cian. So let's try that out. McLean or Theodore, maybe? I don't know which one. What 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 should I call you? I did my real name, my first name, my middle name, and then my second, my last. Amazing. Name. Okay. Great. What's your question? 
the internet connection is unstable. That's okay. I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. And what? How did? What? When you if you move to Portsmouth to the to Massachusetts, is it like a real? Is it just? Is it like? A big bus or is one? I know that's a stupid question, probably, but um. no, that's an excellent question. A lot of people are curious about this. Um, we have two of them. They are both quite large. They are forty feet long, so probably could not fit inside of the classroom. Um, we have two of them, and they—if we have one in Massachusetts, I don't know what shape it will take yet. It will decide. We'll, we'll decide based on what um, kind of laboratory we need. So maybe you can help me decide what kind of lab we should bring to Massachusetts. Um, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna um, go back to do, we had three people who had their hands raised. We'll do three more questions and then we're gonna get into our sample. So I wanna make sure we have enough time. So Paige, go ahead. Can you see germs through the night microscope? Great question. Um, Yes, we can see germs through microscopes. Um, this is a great tool for seeing things that are that small. This microscope is not quite powerful enough to see a germ. However, I have another one right here. Oh, I look the same. But this microscope has a bunch of different lenses that I can zoom in and I can look at things that are even smaller with this kind of microscope. There are microscopes that can allow us to see things as small as atoms, as small as atoms. So that is like the smallest possible piece of something, um, but they don't all work the same way. So I have a microscope that's meant for looking at things that are alive and moving around like insects today? That's a great question. Okay, our two final questions. We have Kate and then Cian. Oh, yeah, are, Is the microscope hard to use? It's not hard to use. All that I need to do when I use it is really work with these two knobs here. One of them, I'll show you when we're, when we're using it again, allows me to zoom in and get close. And the other one allows me to focus, which is to make it clear if it's kind of blurry. And that's all I need to do. So this microscope is very straightforward. Other microscopes can take years to learn how to use. Um, so there is, like I said before, there's a lot of different kinds, but the one that, that we generally use on board the BioBus, the two kinds are both um, things that, that you can learn to do yourselves. Okay, our last question before we get to our sample, um, and I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't get to everybody. I know you all have a lot of interesting thoughts and questions. Go ahead, Cian. Um, like I saw some videos of uh, people like um, um, uh, looking like like um, they uh, they use it uh, they use a microscope to look for um, uh, to look for like germs and uh, on the video they said um, uh, if you look in a human's body with a microscope you'll see some germs. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually extremely important and I think an interesting um, place that, that biologists, um, scientists that study living things are working now. In your body, you have trillions of cells, but there are also probably trillions of bacteria cells. So you have your own, your own body, your own skin, your own blood cells. Um, you also inside your body 
have tiny little bacteria and all sorts of other living things that make their home inside your stomach, inside your throat, in your nose, in your ears. And those all help to protect your body, to help you digest your food, to help you um, keep other things from getting inside. Of course, sometimes we can have things inside our body that aren't good for us as well that are alive, but we rely on trillions of those things. We are an ecosystem. I'm gonna put that word in the chat. This one's really important for me. This is the kind of thing that I study as a scientist. I don't study the human body, but I study ecosystems. Is that word familiar? Can you throw a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you've heard that word before, an ecosystem? Excellent, okay. So with that, I think that's actually a great place for us to, for us to shift gears. We're going to look into this ecosystem and I'll write the name of this one in the chat as well. I call it, um, the environment that I got this from, I would call this leaf litter, which is a kind of funny name. Let's think about what that can mean. Leaf litter just means that on the ground, maybe you've noticed this before, especially sometimes in the spring after we had the fall and all the leaves came down, over the winter and into the spring, things get stepped on and it gets broken up into teeny tiny little pieces until we have just these little fragments of leaves left behind. And then that ends up being a really great home for all sorts of living things. So what I want to do is to take just a little piece of my leaf litter, not a piece of it, I guess. I'm just gonna pour some of it into um, something called a Petri dish. Is this familiar? Has anyone ever seen something like this? It's just a little plastic dish. And this allows me to, to use, to view this under the microscope more easily. I could just put this on, but I think this will make it easier for us to see. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit. And I see I've got some dirt, there's some pine needles in there. All sorts of things going on. Hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll also find some living things. Um, now, I'm gonna put it on the microscope and I'm gonna rely on you, you know what to do. I'm gonna need a countdown um, in order for us to see this. So, can I please get a three, two, one? Okay. Ooh, interesting. Ooh, we already found something alive. What's going on? So you can see it's because it's fuzzy. Remember, I'm using that focus the thing that allows it to be clear. Wow. What do you think? Is this a familiar? Ooh, I've got, okay, caterpillar or maybe a worm. Love those guesses. I have a little more information than you all because I can see it also with my eyes, but yeah, it seems like We've got a few more votes for worm than caterpillar and I would tend to agree. You see, it's kind of slimy. Look at that. It's moving around a lot too. It's making me work, work to look at it. So I'm kind of following it around just by moving that Petri dish. I notice exactly, it's covered in dirt. So all over its body, it's got little tiny pieces of dirt stuck to it. Oh, there's a spot where it's staying still. So I'm gonna zoom in and then I have to refocus. See some little, it looks almost like plastic or something stuck to it too. Little bit of actual litter. That was so cool. Okay. So we have at least one living thing in here. Let's poke around a little more. So you'll notice Throughout the, the whole time we're using the microscope, I'll be kind of zooming and focusing and moving it around. And that's sort of part of my exploring. 
if everybody has a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or something to write with, let's find somewhere that we can stop for a second and we can even draw what we see. So maybe right about here, this is kind of a cool spot. This is like the backdrop of our little ecosystem. So why don't, why don't you all draw a picture of this? This is our leaf litter. This is a nice one because I think I have a little bit of an oak leaf in the back and then I've got this pine needle up front and I noticed there's something interesting going on with this pine needle. I don't really know why, but oh, the worm is moving things around. <laughs> um, I don't really know why, but it's got these little black circles on it. Um, it, it itself is not moving. That's the worm. I think it got stuck to the pine needle. That would be, that would be a crazy plot twist if the pine needle started crawling around. So I'll give you all a few more seconds to draw what you see. And then, ooh, I see something else that I found today. Pull that one first to look at. Okay. Oh, I love these drawings. Oh, that's thank you for showing me. That's great. Amazing. Okay. Now let's do, let's do one more drawing. I'm going to switch samples. I took one thing out. I would call that I've isolated a sample, a specimen, something that looked interesting to me and I took it away from the leaf litter so it wouldn't be um, so hard to see. And now I'm going to move it into the middle of the microscope. I had hundreds of these around my apartment this morning. So if you look for them yourselves, I would bet you could find them. Um, they were just waking up, I think, <laughs> from a long cold winter. Yeah, so that's a great guess, a centipede. It is definitely got a lot of legs going on. Whoa. Okay, now it's on the now it's on the move. Now it's starting to move around. So in these situations, I'm gonna try to keep it so that we can see um, where it's going. It's kind of like playing a video game. I have to guess what direction it's gonna move in. Oh, I found the edge of the dish. It's got these teeny tiny little antennas that help it sense the world around it. So a centipede is a great guess. I, I believe that this is a teeny species of a millipede. It's a little bit difficult to tell the difference between them, but usually a millipede's legs stick kind of straight down from its body. Oh, I love these drawings again, excellent. Um, and a centipede's legs kind of stick out to the sides. That's one way I can tell the difference between them. But they both like to kind of roll up um, into, little, into little circles to protect themselves. Okay, I'm gonna come back. Excellent, so there's a, um, there's an entire world inside of this tiny little jar. If we kept looking, I bet we'd continue to see really teeny tiny things, um, little insects of all sorts. I have a question for you though, and it kind of relates. I got um, from McLean, why, why do we have to look at bugs? What are some other living things that you would be curious to see underneath a microscope? This is really useful for me because sometimes I have things in my house that I can show. Um, but what would you be most interested in? Now that you've gotten to use a microscope, what would you like to see? What would you investigate closer? I'll let you think about it for a second.
What do I mean? If, if you had this in your classroom with you right now, what would you be most excited to see under it? What kind of living thing? Let's limit it to living things because there's so many things in the world. Let's try it. A living thing. What would you be curious to see up close? Okay, so William says a spider. Liam, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Um, I'm, 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 I think I'd like to see a chrysalis. I love that idea. Yeah, so could we look at something um, that was actually going through some sort of a, a metamorphosis? Something like that. I heard you all might have been learning about a life cycle or life cycles this year. Is that right? I do have a sample. Um, I don't have a chrysalis, but I do have um, a few samples of another animal that are going through a life cycle. Should we have that be our, our last sample for today that we look at? You guys can try and you can guess, you can try to guess at what it's gonna become. Um, Sian, go ahead. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> That's okay. It, and I did, I did actually mean you're, I was curious what other um animals people wanted to look at and i see some have come up in the chat so people said maybe a bear or a wolf that would be cool to look at it in winter school. but you have to choose a part of its body maybe just its fur or you could put its teeth a tooth <laughs> under the microscope and see what that looks like um, butterflies would be really beautiful so um to look at my life cycle sample i've got four different stages of its life and they're preserved. So what that means is it's in a special kind of plastic. So it's kind of like frozen in time. Um, and we're gonna start off with this one. They're really tiny little specks. Um, so I'll put on our microscope vision one last time. So let's do a three, two, one, beautiful. And so this is the beginning of our mystery animal's life. It starts out like this. A lot of animals start out as something like this. What does this look like to you all? It could, well, th those are guesses about what it could be, but exactly, Cleo got it. These are its eggs. We don't know what kind of eggs they are yet, but these are certainly the eggs of this animal. They're kind of just small and round. If I turn them over, we can see the other side. Maybe they'll look different on this side. Nope, just kind of round. Not extremely interesting. So I'll take this one off and we'll go to the second stage of its life. Here we go. Put this one under the microscope. It's a little bigger now. And it's got these, wow, it's got these pretty giant eyes. Oh, we've got a guest for this one now, maybe a beetle or a cockroach. We've moved away from our idea that this is a frog. It's got like longer pointier legs, little like hooks on them. Got a pretty wild shape. If I look in at the very front of it, I can see it's even got these almost like pinchers. That's pretty wild. Okay, then the plot thickens. It gets a little bit bigger. Wow. Now I'm gonna zoom out so we can, we can try to see it a little better. But it got a little bigger, but has all the same body parts. So it's kind of like how we grow. His body didn't really change shape. It just, everything got a bit bigger. So now this whole, the whole screen right now is just his eyeball. I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit. That's pretty well, a termite, that's a good guess. Now this is where it gets pretty bizarre. 
So this, this animal has a life cycle where, you know, we've been observing it. It looks, it's got six legs. It's got these kind of pointy structures all around it. But now it's gonna change. So this is it as an adult. Oh, it still has its legs and its eyes. So I recognize the center of its body, but out from the sides. Nice work, everybody. You got it, a dragonfly. So it is very similar to an ant because a lot of ants kind of grow wings like this as they get bigger, but you'll notice the wings of this are just gigantic. They go off into all, they, they get um, wings that are a couple inches long. Sometimes you get, dragonflies that are the size of your head. Really big, really, really big. Um, this one is dead, yeah. But it's a kind of species we might find um, around here if we wanted to. I'll show you what they look like without the microscope now. Okay, so we started off here and then we went through these different stages of its life. And then this was the full size dragon fly, which I think is kind of beautiful. Um, and I'll keep in mind some of the other samples you all suggested. I, I too would be very interested to see what um, the hair or the teeth of some larger predators might look like. So I'll have to keep an eye out for them. Um, and sometimes when we, when we travel to new places, um, you, can, you can find samples or things that you wanna explore and discover. And like I said at the very beginning, you can already do this with the tools that you have, your, your eyes and your ears and your nose, making observations about um, living things and hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to bring a laboratory like the BioBus so you can use all of this equipment with your own hands and, and get to, to try it out for yourself. Does anyone have any, any last questions before we, before we wrap up for today? Oh, I love the emoji cat. Not even the, the symbols. I'm surprised my cat often likes to make um, little appearances while I'm teaching. I think he's taking a nap. I think Ava, you are saying in the chat that you have a question. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Oh, your hand was up. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, go ahead. How often do you use microscopes? That's a great question. Uh, I use them pretty much every day. Um, different scientists use them all different amounts though. So when I worked, I, I used to um, work in a different lab and it was near the sea. I studied things that lived in the ocean and I would spend like entire, a month where I'd just be out collecting samples. So I wouldn't use a microscope at all. And then I'd spend three months just in the lab, looking at them under the microscope. And then I wouldn't go back to the microscope again for a while. I'd be writing what I found. So there's kind of phases of science and some of them include the microscope and some of them do not. Um, so I'm clean. I also saw Paige, you had your, your, your real hand raised. Um, so I wanna make sure I hear from some voices I haven't heard from yet. So um, maybe let's let Paige go ahead and ask a question. And then I see Ellie, you've got your hand up too. Can you take pictures on microscopes? Yeah, so this same camera, that's a great question. It, it can um, take pictures and that is a really important way that scientists communicate with one another now. They take pictures and even videos of what they see under the microscope and then they share that with other scientists so they're able to see 
the discoveries that other people made. Um, and sometimes you can make art with it too. So that's a, um, one of my favorite places where we can cross over between science and art. Um, Ellie, I saw your hand was up and then, um, and then Claire, and then I think we have time for one very last question. Um, have you ever seen a bigger animal predators up close? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, we used to work in a in a laboratory with Biobus that had a big corn snake. So that was one we used to put under the microscope a lot and a turtle. Um, so this microscope, we can look at pretty large animals. And I have another one that's handheld so we can even look at, you know, our hair and our clothes and our eyes. We're a pretty big animal, I would say, right? Um, okay, Claire and then McLean and then we're, and then we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to wrap up. Yeah. Do microscopes have light so you can see it when there's a light on it? Exactly. Yep. So remember that bottom part of the microscope, it has two different lights and that's the only thing that those lights are there for is so that the light can travel through our, our lenses. Um, without a light, then it would be so dark that you couldn't see anything. Uh, but different microscopes can use different, they can use, um, lasers or fluorescent light or even electrons, like electricity to, to make an image. They don't need to have light. Um, okay, I think um, McLean and then we are, we're gonna wrap up, go ahead. Oh, you might be frozen for me. Okay, if you want, you can you can um, add questions in the chat. And I see there's another one here. How do microscopes make things look big? So inside of it, the thing that is really doing all the work is extremely simple. It's just a lens that's made out of glass. And I have one here. So you can see it's just a piece of glass and it's curved. And if I hold it in front of my face, So this is kind of like a microscope and that's all it is, is a little piece of curved glass. And it can make things look really big. That's pretty cool, right? Lenses can be made out of lots of different things, but most of the ones that we use in microscopes are made out of glass. Um, well, this was wonderful. I, um, Oh, okay. So the, the, the question that I didn't get was, um, have I ever gone on a safari to look at animals? I, I don't go on, I haven't been on a safari, but I, I have been on field, I've done field work around the world. So um, the coolest place that, that I got to work for, for my work was in Ireland. Um, I worked in the world's like largest tide pool. It was like the size of a lake and it was full of all sorts of interesting sea creatures. Um, so that was like my version of going on to a safari because I study things that live in the sea. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. Um, well, if you have any more questions, you can always um, tell your teacher and, and she can send them to me. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get to meet in person someday. Thanks so much, Molly. We're so excited to have the BioBus with us today. Um, and we're so excited to have all of you with us today. Thank yeah. you for bringing such wonderful questions. We're so, having Lab Backstage allows us to get science anywhere it needs to be. So thanks to the internet and thanks to Zoom um, for that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, friends. Uh, let's give, let's give scientist Molly a big round of applause. This is how I like to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody have a great day and happy sciencing. Thank you Bye. so much. Fabulous. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. All right. Take care.